Marx's teaching is not a tiny fraction of the modern feminist agenda, and it's not a fringe movement either. It is its centerpiece. From the time of Karl Marx to the 1960s and up until today, the progressive women's rights movement has hardly been about women's rights at all, but instead about the transformation of American society and the transfer of wealth through government force. Women's rights have simply acted as a veil to distract away from the true intentions of progressive activists. The socialist revolution in America depended on two things, a breakdown of the family and women voting for progressives, both of which they have been very successful at doing. In their 1974 uh, manifesto, Prairie Fire, the politics of revolution, anti-imperialism, domestic terrorists, Bill Ayers and Bernadine Dorn and the Weather Underground devoted an entire chapter to how the women's rights movement should be used to advance revolutionary goals, calling feminists to join the ranks and their political agenda. They wrote, quote, sexism will not be destroyed until imperialism is overthrown. It is in the collective interests of women to do this and to take full part in building a socialist revolution. We need power. Socialist revolution lays the foundation for the liberation of women and begins dismantling the tenacious in institutions of sexism. Now, there were only a few hundred copies of Prairie Fire that were produced, and the book has obviously been long out of print. Only the closest activists were privileged to see their blueprint plans for women moving forward in America and through the decades. But as the introduction to the manifesto states, it was written to communist-minded people but more importantly, it was written to women's groups and laid the groundwork for a long-term takeover of the feminist movement. This analysis represents the beginning of a process, not its final conclusion, they wrote. So in this manifesto, Bill Ayers, who has close ties, obviously, to uh, the president, even though nobody wants to talk about that, Bill Ayers gave women a set of tasks based on his realization of the power of an uprising of women could bring to the progressive cause. He said, quote, our goal is the development of feminism, which genuinely determines, safeguards, and defends the collective interests of women, and which, puts in, which points in the direction of revolution. We need to build a revolutionary feminism. Women are at the intersection of, the crisis, of a crisis and the will to survive. So they believed that men acted as male supremacists to women, and that in order to change society, a breakdown in the traditional family structure was necessary. And in order to destroy that structure, they portrayed women as victims inside of it. Quote, the individual capitalist family structure is a wasteful social form and not healthy for children to grow up in. It's a trap for women. It is a sanctioned form for sexual exploitation and a hypocritical double standard. The family breeds competitiveness among us. You think the left hates competition? They do, even in your own family. The family-based competitiveness among us allows no future for women to grow with children, demeans old women, separating them from the life of the community, and the ability of single mothers to work and raise and care for children and maintain a household is a monument to women's strength and determination. The modern male-run nuclear family, when we tear away the veil of sentimentality, is the basic unit of capitalist society. Capitalists and the modern family matured together historically feeding off of each other's development. So you can see that they, they understood what capitalism was about and how, exactly the way that they needed to change it to implement their own progressive socialist policies. But the fact is, despite what the Weather Underground and their ilk want women to think about the so-called wasteful structure of the free market economy and the family, the embrace of the tr traditional family structure is one of the best things that's ever happened to women and it has kept them out of poverty. It should be no surprise that according to a report from the United Nations Development Project, women living in anti-free market or socialist systems, especially in Eastern Europe, experience higher rates of poverty. And so the Prairie Fire Manifesto wasn't on the fringe of far-left policy positions. Its philosophies were deeply rooted in Marxist and socialist thoughts and prevalent throughout Marxist and socialist literature. Take, for example, feminism and the Marxist movement another book that I picked up at the NOW conference, how winning the liberation of women is inseparably linked to the struggle of the working class to transform all economic and social relations by Mary Alice Waters from 1972. Waters was the editor of the Marxist Journal of Politics and Theory and idolized mass murderer Che Guevara in her writings. 
In her work, Waters just details the role socialism played in stoking the 1960s revolutionary feminism, how the Socialist Workers' Party and Young Socialist Alliance promoted the idea of women's liberation being necessary to change the economic structure of the United States. Quote, we threw ourselves into the movement to learn from it, to better understand it, to help lead it in an independent and fighting direction, and win the most conscious feminists to, to bring the most conscious feminists to an understanding that only a socialist revolution could provide the necessarily material foundations for the complete liberation of women. So they're saying in order for women to be liberated, you have to tear down a capitalist structure. At the same time, she wrote, we began the process of arming ourselves theoretically. We studied the relevant Marxist classics more deeply than before and tried to apply them to current reality. We grounded our practice in political orientation in the fundamentals of Marxism. And so Marx was a hero for Waters who became a hero of the feminist movement. So someone she glorified and pointed out, um, she pointed out that he was right when it came to the so-called oppression of the, of women inside the capitalist family structure. She lamented the idea that many women choose to stay home and be a wife and a mother and acknowledged that the women's suffrage movement was not built on the idea of destroying capitalism, but that it was something that needed to be changed through the hijacking and renaming of the women's liberation movement, movement after the 1960s. So one thing that people might not know is the women's suffrage movement was actually a conservative movement. It was conservatives who wanted women to have the right to vote. It was conservatives who pushed through legislation that allowed women to get the right to vote. It was the left that voted against getting women the right to vote. And it wasn't until later when it came politically convenient, as Bill Ayers lined up in his manifesto and many others, that they hijacked the movement and have been getting credit for being pro-women ever since, much like they did with the civil rights movement. And so as socialists began to infiltrate and hijack the feminist movement, they began to create new organizations parading as women's rights groups with an underlying agenda of socialism and redistribution of wealth in America. The National Organization was one of, for Women was one of them. There are many more. So I know we've heard a lot about Marx, but we, I think, need to take a look at what exactly he said and go straight to the source on the issue. What did he say about women? Well, you can find it all in the Communist Manifesto, which is sold <laughs> uh, at your local socialist bookstore. No, um, but no, it really can be found all in his, social, in his Communist Manifesto, where he boldly states his goal was of destroying the family and promoting single women in addition to dependence on all an all-powerful state government. He wrote, abolition of the family, saying that men claim to exploit their women in their families. On what foundation is the present family, the bourgeois family based on capital, on private gain? It is completely developed from this family, ex from this family, this family exists only among the capitalists, but this state of things finds its complement in the practical absence of the family among the proletarians and in public institutions. So Marx believed that keeping women and children protected inside the family was exploitation. He also believed instead that they should be raised by and educated by the government. He said, do you charge us with wanting to stop the exploitation of children by their parents, as if keeping kids inside the family was exploitation? You'll see this a lot with the education system. Why is it that progressives want your kids to be at school from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and want to feed them three meals and have everything come through the state education system? He says, to this crime of wanting to destroy the family, we plead guilty. But you will say we destroy the most hallowed of relations when we replace home education by the social state. So social studies, ring a bell, anyone? But what, far, what Marx failed to mention uh, about women was how his goals would leave more women in poverty along with their children. And so in closing, there are just a few questions that we can ask in the modern era uh, that are based of the feminist movement and of the left that claims to be pro-woman in the modern era of Barack Obama. We, there's a few questions that we can ask that destroy this bogus idea that the left is where women belong. You know, if liberals really believe that strong independent women can protect themselves, then why do they oppose the right to keep and carry a firearm for self-defense? 
What, you know, if Barack Obama is the most pro-woman president in American history, as many far-left feminist groups have uh, classified him, then why does he seek to make women more dependent on the government and dependent on the government for everything that they have? You'll remember during the 2012 presidential campaign, the Obama campaign produced this Life of Julia slideshow. And, you know, let, I always like to hold le the left accountable f up to their own standards, if, as if they have any, but to their own standards and statements. And they're constantly screaming about sexism, right? And this Life of Julia slideshow portrayed this young woman who's born and then she dies. And her entire life, she is dependent on the government for everything from her food, her education, her housing, raising her child without a father, everything. But where was the life of John? Why is it that the left only thought that it was women who should be raised by the state, that they were the weaker of the genders, that there was no way that they could survive any time in their life without a government handout, without the government holding their hand? On that issue, of course, this was included in the, right, the life of Julia, if the right to an abortion gives women personal autonomy and sexual freedom, then why are its debilitating after effects conveniently ignored? We often hear this accusation that conservatives are against women's health. Well, if conservatives are against women's health, then why is it that conservatives want women to know all of their options and all of the information before they go in to have that procedure? It's the left who is constantly trying to keep information out of the hands of women uh, on very serious lifelong uh, decisions that they make in that, those medical areas. And finally, if conservatives are so insensitive to women, then why is it that the sexual lechery of Ted Kennedy and Bill Clinton has been ignored or cover up for years? You know, the left has been lying to women and all of us for decades, and they've successfully rewritten history. The left talks about women in one way in reality and treats them, or they talk about them in one way, but in reality treats them very differently. And the left has been selling victimhood as empowerment for decades. I know that I'm sick and tired as a woman uh, of being defined by the pills that I take and being defined by lady parts or body parts or as a victim of my gender. And I'm sure that a lot of the women in this room are too, and I'm sure that the men are tired of, of being accused of hating women simply because you want them to pay their own bills, which once upon a time was an empowering thing to do. The bottom line is that women succeed through opportunity, free markets, and hard work, not through dependence on the government or through socialist policies. And we all succeed in this way. The place to push back against this classification of women the sexist classification of women by the pills that they take is on college campuses and it's important for Young America's Foundation to continue that fight.